I, I was surprised in uh, preparing for the, the interview when uh, you were let go by the Charlotte Bobcats for really the first time in your career, it seemed like the, the job offers did not roll in like th they once did. Um, wh why do you think that was? Well, um, Michael put out a ma message that it was, uh, I wasn't fired, that it was a, a mutual decision, which was totally untrue. He fired me, he fired me on Christmas. Um, we had just made the playoffs the year before. Um, they let Tyson Chandler go. They let Raymond Felton go. They which were, were your guys. Yeah, they were ready to let Boris Diaw and Gerald Wallace go, which they did a short time after that. We started off poorly, and you know, you are what your record is. And um, he wasn't happy with the way we started this season. And I think when somebody that you you admire so much and have so much trust in fires you. I think other people probably said, well, if he, if one of his close friends and a guy that, you know, he had a great relationship let him go, why would we bring him back? So their mistake, that's the way I feel. Um, but I think Michael had every right to do it. He was the owner. Um, our record was poor at the time and he moved in another direction. And then when you're 70 years old and the last two jobs you had were Charlotte and the Knicks, I, I think people would say, this guy, he's way over the hill. I, I understand at that time, you really would not watch or go to an NBA game because it was just too painful for you. How did being unemployed at that time kind of impact you, and I know you, you, you grim, but it was, I, I mean, from what I understand, it really, um, you know, it was bothersome at the time. Well, I, I didn't want to go to an NBA game, bec not because it was painful, I didn't want to bring attention to myself. Okay. I thought me being in an arena, and I was vi invited a lot of places, uh, but I thought me being in an arena would maybe be a, a distraction for you know, some of the people that were coaching. Because um, if you look at the NBA, I, I don't think any coach, except for maybe a few, is really secure in their job. Um, and I think a lot of coaches aren't really given a, a chance to, you know, stamp, put their stamp on a team. Uh, I should have gotten fired in San Antonio my first year. We would. We won 21 games, but Red McCombs gave me a chance and stuck with me, and uh, that allowed me to stay there for quite a while. But um, I, I didn't like not working. Well, I, work's a bad, bad word. I, I've never worked. You know, I, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I was hoping I could do when I was a young boy. Um, not on this level, not on the pro level. I thought I'd was going to be a high school coach. Um, and teach I, history. Yeah, I, I loved American history. I, I used to read Chip Hilton books, um, and they had a coach that coached baseball, basketball, and football, and, and that's, that was my goal. Um, I thought that would be my dream job. Um, I happened to get lucky and go to North Carolina and have Dean Smith and Frank McGuire mentor me and play on the Olympic team with Miss Diver and John McClendon. So they made me want to be a coach. So not working for two years, driving your kids to school, and that was fun being around them. I loved it. Smelling them every day was the best, but I miss being in the gym. I miss teaching. I miss being around coaches and players. And so I, it was it was not a fun time for me